I bought this watch on a shoot in Amsterdam. It was a Longines Wittenauer watch, and it had a very flat crystal. And when light would hit the crystal, it would shine hundreds of feet away. And my daughter and I and, and wife would go to 8 o'clock mass, and I noticed that the light coming through the window would reflect on my watch, and sometimes I'd shine it in the priest's face all the way across the church. And my daughter would laugh her butt off, and my wife would be <laughs> like this. We talk about who we should meet at St. Paul's. Well, obviously, it was Bud Kaiser. Now, nine months without work, uh, and I get a meeting with Kaiser. And he looks at my reel, and it's a lot of documentary. Really good stuff. I mean, I had a really great reel. And uh, he looked at me, and he said, you're very good, Vinny, but we don't do documentaries. So I'm afraid to tell you I can't find any work for you. So I thanked him. I walked out, and I started to cry. I just offered my services for free, and I can't get hired. About two or three weeks later, I'm in church. Bud is doing the homily, and he's talking about giving back. If you're a producer or a writer, you can give back. Well, my wife gave me an elbow and said, you know, here's your entree. So I wrote a letter to Bud, and it was, Dear Father Kaiser, why don't you practice what you preach and hire me? Two days later, I got a call. Is this from De Bona? I said, I knew who it was immediately. Well, I received your letter, and you're going to regret writing this letter for the rest of your life. Bud said, would you like to come and stage manage for me on some of our insight programs? After I think I'd done about four or five, he said, would you like to AD? And uh, it was new for me because I'd never done uh, three camera. And I fell right in, and it was pretty good. Uh, one of the episodes that was particularly interesting and controversial was a piece called God on the Dock. And it, God was on trial for inhumanities that had happened in the world. Innocent people are being hurt, degraded, killed by the selfishness of other people. I find that unacceptable. I do too. Well then, what are you doing about it? I'm talking to you, aren't I? What does that mean? There's a lot you could be doing, Kay. They're not my responsibility. Then whose? Yours. The governments, the welfare agencies, churches. Ah, yes. Let George do it, let God do it. It's so easy to shift the burden. You seem to have forgotten. You're on trial here, not me. I, I think one of the things he capitalized on was he was doing dramatic pieces that had impact and um, was attractive to someone who might be doing a kind of soft sitcom during the week. And this was now a piece that they could do and be proud of. One of the more fun ones was about Adam and God in the Garden of Eden. And the whole studio had to be dressed as a jungle. And that was uh, no small feat, uh, but it was fun. And it was, uh, once again, it had this incredible message. And at the end of the week, we made good television. You thundered, Lord. Something has happened. Go to Adam. Why? What's wrong with Adam? Adam is afraid. Afraid? What? Of the thunder? No, Adam is afraid because he is thinking. Thinking can be a very frightening experience. I'll stop him thinking, Lord. I'll order him to stop thinking. I don't want you to do that. Well, then, what should I do? You know, I don't know. Play it by ear. Yes, Lord. This became the Cadillac of religious programs. It was entertaining, yet it was spiritual. And, and guess what? He had a mission and he brought that mission to fruition.